Hey everyone, it's Stephanie Way, and welcome to this Way Under Par Hangout. It's been a few weeks, and I apologize for the delay. Um, me and Luke Elvey, our clubhouse show, will also be back to tomorrow. Luke's been really busy because of Adam Scott winning the Masters, which is understandable, so um, we've had some issues with scheduling it. Anyway, let's get to the players. What an exciting finish, huh? And um, it definitely did not lack any drama. Most of it, though, came off the course with Sergio Garcia and Tiger Woods telling us how they really feel about each other. And they don't like each other, which we all knew. But you know what? Say what you will about Sergio. I find it endearing that he does tell the truth. He is a kind soul. And... You know, I mean, it comes across as whiny a little bit, but that's just sort of Sergio. And I used to find it pretty annoying, but now I find it kind of endearing, and I kind of feel bad for him because he's so polarizing. And I don't know him very well, but I do know that he's a nice person. Um, and let's see, but so it was really heartbreaking to see him, see what happened to him on 17. But you know what? I think that he will get over it just fine. Um, he try to win. He, you know, he hit an aggressive shot and we can't fault him for that. So he's going to be fine. And <laughs> this is kind of mean, but I think he's used to things not necessarily working out the way that he would have liked. Um, and th there have been way more heartbreaks for Sergio. But meanwhile, Tiger Woods recovered very well from that double bogey on 14. He really does not like that tee shot. I saw him earlier in the week on Thursday push it to the right by the cart path just don't want to miss left. And I think that what happened on 14 was that he got stuck on 13 with that shot that he had long right, and then he just overcorrected. Um, but he recovered very well, and all props to him. Pretty incredible what he's done. This is his fourth win of the year. And if you don't think that he's going to win Memorial, then you might need to get your head checked. Um, and I have to wonder how much Lindsey Vaughn has on the influence of this. I mean, I think that Tiger seems very happy in his personal life, and of course then that leads to being happy in your professional life, right? <laughs> That's usually how it works. Anyway, let's see what else. Oh, and I think that we all need to give David Lingmer a big tip of the hat. Um, hats off to that kid. He rookie, and he now has the best finish in the player's history for a rookie at the players, which is T2. He tied, you know, he tried to force a playoff by being really aggressive on that birdie putt, as he should. You know, if he would have left him that short, he would have never been able to live with himself, I think. But, you know, he can sleep fine, not finishing solo second. You know, he didn't, that cost him $315,000 around there. But it doesn't matter. He secured his tour card for the following year. And he should be very happy with the way he played um, and how he held himself. I mean, that everyone thought he was going to shoot 78 today, and he did not. And that was great and very exciting to see. And also a shout-out to Kevin Strillman, who also finished TSEC, T2. Um, he's been playing very well lately, and it was great. He was a great guy as well. So let's just take it to questions, which I see some of you guys have asked. Um, I was supposed to have Shoshana help me with these questions, but fortunately, Google Hangouts don't work on um, iPads yet, which hopefully we'll figure that soon. All right, this comes from Tony Pontecorvo at Disguy, so D I S G U Y Y. He asks, Did you hear other players take sides or comment on the brouhaha this weekend? He's obviously referring to Tiger and Sergio. I mean, I, I did hear a few guys make comments and just sort of laugh at it, but, and you know, I think that some of them were, they weren't necessarily sides, but some of them did credit Sergio for speaking his mind on Tiger publicly because most people are too scared to give their opinions on how they really feel. But, and of course, I think that there are guys that thought that Sergio was a whiner, of course. It seemed pretty split just depending on who you were talking to. I felt like there was a little bit more sympathy for Sergio, but again, it just it depends. I can't really give a fair assessment because I don't want to um, accidentally 
um, say who I was talking to. And okay, let's see what else. Um, why did this comes from Michael Mitchell um, at, at Michael M? Why did Sergio's relationship with Norman's daughter end? I don't know, but she dumped him. <laughs> um, I, I honestly I can't remember hearing the story about that, but I know that that caused him to get into a little bit of a slump for a bit there, and I know he was very heartbroken. Yep, I would. I don't think anyone's surprised to hear that either. Okay, and here comes. Um, here's a question from Doug Northcutt. At Doug Northcutt, I saw what the bogey cost Lee Murphy. What did he make? Let's see. He made I think seven hundred something thousand dollars. Made yeah seven hundred and nine thousand dollars for that T two finish, which is not a bad not a bad paycheck for a week's worth there. And then this one is Ben Carter at Bentnar twenty. Is there any? Is there an athlete as clutch as clutch as Tiger in any sport? Fifty three and four leading or co leading into fourth round now. That's a great question, and I don't think that there is. There probably isn't. I don't know what the statistics go with, but I mean Tiger's won what seven out of the last twenty two seven wins in the last twenty two starts too. That's pretty crazy. Um, you know, but what I would like to see is him coming from behind and winning. You know, he doesn't have the great record that, but what I think happens is that, as we've seen, like at the Masters and what have you recently, is that he tends to press a little bit too much, and then that causes some, when things don't go his way, he gets a little bit frustrated. But as for guys who have the lead, I, I can't think of any player in the sport who, off the top of my head, if you guys can, please tweet me with the hashtag Whoop Hangout and let me know. Uh, but yeah, Tiger is really incredible, and no one can discount him as that. Um, and it depends on how you see it. He's okay, so he's now won 78 career PGA Tour wins. That's four short of Sam Snead's all-time record at 82. But he, but bet four, five of those 82 wins were with a team. Player and while the PGA Tour counts them, I mean, I think that's a little bit, it depends how you see it, I guess. Because technically, Sam Snead has only won 77 individual uh, tour events. So, t some, it depends on how you see it, but Tiger has kind of surpassed it, Sam Snead's record, but he hasn't yet until he reached 82. And I don't think that it will take very long for him to get there. Um, let's see, Keith O'Halloran asked, or at K O'Halloran25 asked, was Sergio asked about the Hecklers in fairway? No, he wasn't, but I don't think it's anything that Sergio is uh, new to. He's dealt with Hecklers in the past, and he, let, he tends to talk back to Hecklers, too. Like, at, yesterday was actually pretty cool. On the seventh hole, it was in the right rough, and a guy goes, Nothing personal, Sergio, but I heard you miss it. And Sergio shoots right back. You don't want to leave early, do you? And the guy's face was just a shock. And that definitely shut him up, and he was pretty embarrassed because everyone was like, oh. But he definitely was not expecting Sergio to talk back. So that was pretty cool. Um, and let's see, okay, Michael Posner. At Michael underscore Posner is Tiger notorious for being a bad tipper? Yes, he is. <laughs> but I mean, that's his friends give him a hard time, and that's what everyone says. I don't know. I wouldn't have been in a situation to know about that. Let's see. Um, Pat Osinowski. Sorry if I've said your name wrong. At Osinowski FL. You have been around both players for a number of years. Who do you believe, Sergio Tiger or just being boys? What do you? I'm not sure if I understand the question in terms of um, who I believe. I mean, I don't know either of them particularly well. Um, um, besides, I mean, I, I just think that it's there's not one person that's right or wrong here. It's just their interpretation of it. 
Um, I would like to talk to that marshal who told Tiger Sergio and hit. Um, and I, I do believe that Sergio is right when he says that the other player does generally have a set when the other player is about to hit. But I don't think that Tiger did it on purpose for a sale, or at least, I don't know. It, it was it's a complicated issue, but I don't think that there's one person that's right or wrong. I just think that they really don't like each other, and I wouldn't be surprised if one of them did something to the other, or was it, or maybe Tiger wasn't as careful as he would have been had it been someone else. I don't know. But I really, I think that Sergio might have been a little bit paranoid on there. But he is right in the respect that players do know when that the other guy is going to hit. So that's that. Sorry if that's not really a good answer, but sorry. Um, Phil Burns at DM Golfer. Bigger prima donna, Donna Sergio Rory. Mm, I don't think either of them are. So that's sorry if that's not the question the answer you'd like to hear. Um, here's another one for Pat Ostinowski at OSKFL. Do you enjoy coming to Jacksonville? And when, what is your favorite restaurant or hangout? Um, let's see, I don't get out much, so <laughs> I don't know. I heard that Taco Lou is good. That's at Jacksonville Beach. I'm staying kind of far away this year from Jacksonville Beach and where everyone else is, so I don't know. But I went to a really good Thai restaurant yesterday. It was kind of far away, though. Um, it was called Mai Thai. And, I mean, it would have been 40 minutes, though, from Honda Beecher, probably. That was great. And, oh, Jacksonville Beach, I stayed there two years ago at the courtyard down there, but it just gotten so expensive to stay there. And so I um, got cheap this year in the Priceline Hotel. That was kind of far away. But I love Jacksonville Beach. I have a lot of friends that live down there um, from the tour, from, I don't know, caddies or players or what have you that live around there, and that's such a nice area. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. That's what I have so far. Oh, here's another one from Michael Mitchell at Michael M. Which PGA players have been the most difficult for you to interview? I, I let's see. Can you clarify on that? Um, can't really think of anyone off the top of my head. I mean, I'm not going to get any one-on-ones with Tiger, but no one he does. So I guess I would say Tiger, but. I mean, he's always available there if you need to talk to him. And they've all been very nice lately, so I can't think of anyone who's blown me off. I can probably tell you who's more enjoyable to look more enjoyable to interview than others. Um, let's see. Well, I'm going to think probably about guys that I've spoken to recently. Because oh well, so I did a um, I got quotes for a beef jerky story about Luke Liss's caddy. Um, Jeff King, who makes this amazing beef jerky, and it's now turning into a legitimate business, which is very cool because all these players love it. Like Dustin Johnson, Ricky Fowler, Davis Love, Matt Poocher, they're big fans of this homemade jerky. And Davis Love was telling me that um, him and his daughter and wife over one week and ate four massive bags of it. Uh, so that was kind of interesting. That was fun. And oh, Justin Rose is always great talk with. I mean, you can always rely on him to give you a thoughtful quote. Um, I spoke with a bunch of guys about the VJ incident, and some guys didn't want to comment, um, which I understood, but I actually got a number of guys on the record to talk to me about what they made of it. Johnson Wagner was great. You know, he said, VJ's a great guy, but look, he's made, like, what, $70 million out here? He doesn't need the money. It's a bit frivolous. I don't see what the point is. So that was great. And then um, Boo Weekly is always great to talk with. I mean, it doesn't get much better than Boo. And also Robert Garrigus is great. Um, you know, even when he doesn't, you know, he, he when I went to go find him about BJ, he said that his phone was ringing off the hook. When he saw me, he goes, I knew you'd be, well, I knew I, I was expecting you. So that everyone's looking to talk to him because they all think, we all think he's going to say something stupid, but he's not. And, you know, he was playing with BJ for Thursday and Friday, so I completely understand that. He obviously, but he still gave me an answer. You know, he still gave me a sound bite. He still talked to me. And that was really great. A lot of guys, not everyone would have done that. So let's see, I haven't had any bad experiences lately, for better or worse. Um, I always enjoy talking to Rory. He's such a nice kid. And, um, yeah, no one's been tough lately, unfortunately. Gosh, what's happening? There has to be someone that was a dick lately. Oh, I probably shouldn't have said dick. I just did. Um, 
Let's see who else we got. So I'm going through the list of players. Uh, Patrick Harrington is such a nice guy. He's always interesting to talk to. He's he's been a little bit sheepish or a little bit trying to elusive when it comes to talking to the press ever since he switched to the belly putter the last few weeks because I don't think he likes that he's using the belly putter because he's against it fundamentally, but it does help him. Okay, let's see what else. Um, at Paul Nakata, at um, Paul Nakata, at Paul Nakata asks, Warriors or Spurs? I have Warriors in seven. That's a great one. I would love the Warriors to win. They're such a fun team. I mean, I think that everyone who's not a Spurs fan is rooting for them, especially because Steph Curry is such a great player to watch. Okay, Joe Team Holst, at Joe Team Holst. Are we going to see you at any LPJ events? And two, will you visit Europe this year? Yes, I will be at the U.S. Women's Open, at, so that's one at least, and I'll try to fit some more in later in the year. And yes, I will be in Europe. Um, I believe I'll be there for the Open Championship, but also be at the Scottish Open. And then after the Open, I'm going to, on a trip with some other riders to Ireland to play some golf. So that'll be really fun. I'm really looking forward to that trip. And um, Donald Farnswick at Don the Green. So is that really Sevy getting fresh last night? No, Sevy has passed away. It was some asshole who was using uh, using Sevy's name in some way in being an asshole. So that was really unfortunate. I probably shouldn't have replied, but I was feeling extra feisty last night, and I couldn't help myself. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate. Sometimes with you know these trolls. I just respond to them or retweet them because I don't know what else to do and it can be a little bit fun and you get other people to yell at them, right? Anyway, anyone got anything else? We gotta send them soon or we're gonna wrap this up. And again, tomorrow, uh, Luke Elby and I will be doing our show The Clubhouse at 7 p.m. Eastern, so I hope you guys all tune in to watch that. Luke is always so great and he has such great insight on all the Australian golfers. And I would love feedback. I know that it's been a few weeks, and I've missed you guys, and I've missed doing these. So, and I apologize for being a little bit rusty here and for the format being, um, I guess, not as, uh, not on a schedule, I guess I would say. I'm going to try to be better about that. I always appreciate feedback. Please tweet me or email me. You know, there's a lot of ways to get a hold of me, and... You guys know most of them. So thanks for watching and hope you guys enjoyed the week and check out other more coverage on wayunderpar.com. All right, thanks and I'll see you guys